Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of surface engineering. And in the previous presentation, we have talked about the principles uh, behind the uh, surface modification techniques wherein surface properties are enhanced by changing the surface metallurgy only without changing any chemical composition. And we have seen that uh, the work hardening, transformation hardening and the grain refinement mechanisms work very effectively uh, using the various methods uh, like there are two category of the methods in one of the categories where mechanical energy is used for controlled surface layer deformation and whenever the surface controlled surface layer deformation is applied it, it causes the work hardening as well as uh, improvement in properties is also caused by the grain refinement. And there is another uh, category of the methods wherein thermal energy is used and this method primarily uh, uses the principle of transformation hardening. However, uh, so in the in case of the transformation hardening basically the soft soft phases are transformed into the hard phases to improve the properties. Uh, the thermal methods also utilize the principle of the grain refinement for improving the mechanical properties. So, uh, in this presentation basically I will be talking about the uh, transformation hardening based methods uh, which are used for improving the surface metallurgy so as to enhance the surface properties as well as the improve the wear resistance of the components. So, as I have said uh, the transformation hardening methods. There are three very commonly used transformation hardening methods. These are laser hardening, flame hardening and induction hardening. Both these methods follow the same principle which involves the controlled heating up to the required depth followed by rapid cooling. Sometimes rapid cooling happens just by the self cooling, no external cooling is required, but otherwise forced cooling is also used wherein water jet is applied onto the surface which has been heated. So, water jet is used for cooling the surfaces which has been heated uh, by the flame and by the induction while in case of the laser. Uh, normally self cooling if the dimensions are sufficient, the suction thickness is heavy, then even self cooling causes the required transformation hardening. And both these all these uh, three methods are applicable for a specific category of the metals which are having either uh, like for medium which are having sufficient carbon content and uh, alloying elements especially in case of the ferrous metals. So, medium carbon steels, high carbon steels, high carbon steel and the alloy steel as well as cast irons which are having the carbon content greater than 2 percent this is applicable. So, since these methods uh, offer the high hardenability and that is why these can be uh, strengthened or proper surface properties can be improved through the transformation hardening. Transformation hardening primarily involves heating for austenitizing or austenitic trans, uh, transformation of soft phases into the austenite, soft phases means ferrite and perlite into the austenite followed by rapid cooling. So, rapid cooling facilitates the transformation of austenite into the martensite which is being harder than uh, the austenite and other uh, soft phases like perlite and uh, ferrite. So, because of the uh, formation of the harder phases it improves the surface hardness and thereby it improves the mechanical properties. So, if uh, we have to compare these methods then uh, these methods can simply be compared with respect to the power density which is offered by these methods in terms of the watt per mm square. So, the, the first method uh, like flame hardening which offers very low energy density or the power density flame hardening. 
uh, like uh, uh, 50 to 100 watt per mm square. On the other hand, if we talk of the induction hardening, it will offer somewhat higher energy density uh, for induction hardening. And the laser hardening offers very high energy density which may be to the tune of 10 to the power 8 or more for uh, so that is the kind of energy density which is offered by but for the induction hardening purpose normally 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 watt per mm energy square energy density is used. So, this is applicable for the laser hardening. So, if we see this sequence. Uh, laser hardening offers the highest energy power density, uh, then induction hardening and then flame hardening. So, uh, based on this if we see the flame, so the surface which is to be hardened in case of the flame hardening, the flame is used and the flame is produced basically this is the neutral flame which is achieved through the combustion of the acetylene and oxygen. So, the temperature generated is high enough of around 3000 degree centigrade, but controlled application of the flame onto the substrate causes the uh, transformation of the perlite and ferrite into the austenite. And once the flame has been applied uh, onto the surface, temperature will rise and rise in temperature is achieved in the range of although as per the uh, as per the composition of the material it is heated above the upper critical temperature limit which is called ac3 line or upper critical temperature line so that the soft phases are transformed into the austenite and once uh, uh, and this is achieved through the application of the flame since the flame uh, offers the lower power density or lower energy density. Therefore, the flame is to be applied for longer time uh, to achieve the required rise in temperature so that the soft phases can be transformed into the austenite. And once the heating up to the required depth is achieved, the flame is moved. And once the flame is moved, uh, we will be applying the rapid cooling through the application of the water jet. So, water jet will be causing uh, water jet onto the surface which has been austenitized. So, this rapid cooling will be leading to the transformation of austenite into the martensite. So, uh, this is how the hardening is achieved in case of the flame hardening. Since the power density or the energy density associated with this process is low that is why it this process is slightly lower and this is uh, effectively used for hardening the gear tooth surfaces shafts and other components wherever engine uh, improvement in surface properties of the medium high uh, carbon or alloy steels or cast irons is required uh, uh, so, if we want to regulate the depth up to which uh, the hardening is to be done, then uh, to, uh, to adjust the depth of uh, uh, hardening, uh, what we have to do basically the speed of the flame is regulated so that the amount of heat being delivered to the surface is adjusted and accordingly that the, the depth up to which austenitization will be taking place that will be changed. Like say if we are moving, uh, the, if the flame is moved at a faster rate then very thin layer will be heated to the austenitic state and that will be subjected to the martensitic transformation. If the flame is moved at a fast, uh, at, a, at a lower speed then the greater amount of the heat will be delivered to the substrate, greater uh, the the depth, greater depth will be austenitized means the austenitization will be taking place up to the greater depth which subsequently on the rapid cooling will be subjected to the martensitic transformation. So, the depth up to which hardening will be taking place 
uh, by this method that will be regulated through the speed of the flame movement and uh, the flame is normally neutral so that uh, the maximum temperature is realized and uh, efficient controlled ostentization is achieved. So, in this case in case of the flame hardening uh, the heating using the oxyacetylene flame or oxy fuel flame followed by rapid cooling using the water jet is used for hardening the surfaces. Uh, of course, there will always be um, a kind of the variation in the, in the cooling rates which will be experienced cooling rates which will be experienced by the different zones like if we say uh, this is the depth up to which we, uh, ostentization has taken place then by the water jet cooling maximum cooling rate will be experienced by the surface that is somewhat lower cooling rate will by the subsurface region and the metal systems which are existing for at further lower depths uh, at a further a deeper uh, a portion uh, from the surface that those will be experiencing further the lower cooling rate. So, if we compare this with, uh, with the uh, CCT diagram if we, the cooling rates are superimposed uh, using the CCT diagram. So, the highest cooling rate will be like say at this level, the second level and third level. Uh, the surface will be cooled at a maximum rate, there is a much lower cooling rate, lower cooling rate and further lower cooling rate. So, if say surface is uh, and this is the slide like say MS start and MS finish and uh, this is the temperature, this is the time diagram. So, the surface will be experiencing the highest cooling rate like this in any case entire austenite will be transforming into the martin side. Below this there will be cooling rate will be somewhat lower. So, maybe like this again uh, uh, whole of the austenite will be transforming into the martin side. But if we talk of the, the third zone where cooling rate is further lower, we will see that part of the austenite is transforming into the perlite and remaining austenite is transforming into the martin side. And if the cooling rate is further lower, then we will see that uh, most of the austenite is transforming into the fine perlite or the bainite. So, this kind of uh, structural variation will be leading to the like uh, full martensitic transformation at the surface. Here also full martensitic transformation in this case will be taking place, then it will, will be having the uh, martensite plus perlitic transformation and then fine perlitic or bainitic transformation in the uh, the regions which are too deep below the surface. Since the highest hardness will be offered by these phases, somewhat lower hardness in the subsurface region and further lower hardness in further subsurface regions. So, if we try to plot the variation in hardness from the surface, this is surface and going deep. So, depth increasing depth from the surface. If we plot in the uh, x axis and the hardness in the y axis, then the distance up to which the martin, full martensitic transformation has taken place, their hardness will be maximum and then we will see that uh, the combination of the martensite means mixture of martensite and perlite is being formed, then according to the fraction of the martensite and perlite, hardness will be gradually reducing. So, as we go deeper and deeper, martensite fraction will keep on decreasing while the fraction of the perlite will keep on increasing and then we will see that uh, a fine perlite is being formed and the subsurface zone. So, this is corresponding to the zone uh, surface as well as the zone 1, then zone 2, then zone 3 and then sub uh, and then the, this is the substrate where no change in the structure is there. So, there will always be variation in hardness. Uh, now, there is another point the depth up to which case hardening uh, has taken place or the depth up to which required hardness has been achieved. For that what we have to do? We have to set the required hardness level and then the required hardness level is this much then this is the depth up to which required increase in the hardness has been achieved through the laser hardening or flame hardening or the induction hardening. So, this is how we try to find out the depth up to which required hardness has been achieved and there will be a very limited depth up to which the maximum hardness will be there and below that the hardness will be somewhat lower as per the kind of phases which are being formed. 
So, this method flame hardening method is somewhat slower and it takes uh, longer and since the amount of heat which is to be applied onto the components that will be more. So, there will be possibility for the distortion of the components which is being subjected to the uh, in uh, flame hardening. Now, the another method which is used is the uh, induction hardening. Induction hardening uses somewhat higher uh, energy density. So, here the coils are used through which high frequency AC current is supplied and this coil is brought close to the surface which is to be hardened. So, that at the near surface layers the current is induced, current is induced and this uh, uh, the magnet whatever current is induced this is localized over a very uh, thin layer and this uh, localization happens due to the skin effect and proximity proximity effects and uh, once the induced current is localized over a very thin layer so current flowing over thin layer causes the high resistance means the current is localized over thin layer. So, whatever is the resistance of the material, whatever is the current and the time for which it is flowing, this will be determining the heat which is being generated. So, uh, the heat generated is uh, determined by the I square RT, I is the current induced, R is the resistance of the material and T is the time for which uh, this current is induced and which will be causing the uh, heating. So, uh, since the current induced is localized over a very small area, so this causes the ra very rapid heating of the near surface layers and the heating up to the required depth is realized, uh, it will be subjected to the rapid cooling using the water jet. So, basically the coil is moved past the surface means over the surface there is no physical contact and once the heating up to the required depth is realized, uh, the surface will be subjected to the cooling through the water jets and once it is uh, achieved uh, means the rapid cooling is done. So, the austenite will be transformed into the martensite. So, just like a flame hardening in this case the high carbon or uh, low carbon or medium carbon steel or alloy steel which is being uh, subjected to the heating uh, through the uh, induction effect. Uh, surface layer heating will be causing the uh, transformation of the ferrite and perlite into the austenite and once the austenite is formed up to the required depth, uh, the rapid cooling using the water jet will be transforming the austenite into the martensite and will, which in turn will be causing the required improvement in the hardness. Now, there are certain things like the depth up to which current induced, the depth of depth up to which current is induced up to which current induced this is found inversely proportional to the frequency of current or frequency of AC current which is being supplied to the coil. Um, this is found inversely proportional to the frequency of current. Uh, so, if which means that D is the depth, this is found inversely proportional to the frequency of the current, which means greater is the frequency, higher is the frequency, lower will be the depth up to which current will be induced. So, which means uh, if we want that very thin layer is hardened, then a high frequency AC current is used, then somewhat medium frequency medium frequency current is used if you want somewhat greater depth of the hardening and 
low frequency will be used for greater depth of a hardening. So, because the depth up to which current will be induced is uh, found the function of the, uh, the frequency and it is inversely related. So, the depth up to which current will be induced will be, will be, emo, will, will be inversely proportional to the frequency, higher the frequency great, lower will be the depth and since the current is localized near the surface layer as per the frequency. So, if the, the frequency is low, the current will be induced up to the greater depth and accordingly the austenitization will be taking place up to the greater depth which subsequently on rapid cooling will be causing the austenite to martensitic transformation to achieve the required uh, improvement in surface properties. So, uh, this in the temperature uh, range uh, during due to the induction heating can vary like say 300 to 1200 degree centigrade. So, the, the, the speed of the induction coil and uh, the current frequency, the power of the induction coil all those has things are to be optimized to achieve the required depth uh, of the hardening. So, that uh, required improvement in properties can be achieved. So, basically the speed of the coil power of the uh, induction heating and uh, the speed will be governing the time and the power of the induction heating as well as the frequency of the AC current. These are to be optimized so that the required depth of the hardening can be achieved through the austenitization followed by rapid cooling. Again this method primarily uses the principle of austenite to martensitic transformation for improving the hardness and improving the mechanical properties. Now, another uh, method is the uh, laser hardening, laser hardening. So, as I have said the laser uses the very high energy density uh, like 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 watt per mm square and here we have the time. Uh, in the x axis we have time uh, 10 to the power minus 4, 10 to the power minus 3, 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power 0 and then like this. So, uh, there is a particular band which is of uh, which is used for induction heating purpose uh, and this uh, goes in like this for steels. This is the kind of uh, uh, the, the combination of the exposure time, time in seconds and the power density as far as the laser is concerned. So, um, higher is the power lesser will be the uh, laser uh, um, interaction with the surface which is required for the hardening purpose. This is applicable for the steels. Now, we will see, uh, uh, now we will see uh, the kind of uh, the variation which is observed uh, uh, when the laser is applied onto the surface. So, very small area will be subjected to the application of the heat. So, uh, because part of the heat, uh, part of the laser is reflected back, part of the laser is absorbed which uh, is converted into the heat and uh, this in turn causes the ri very rapid rise in temperature. Because the energy density associated with the laser is very high, so it requires very less time uh, for um, heating and, or, and for rising the raising the temperature of the material up to the required ostentization. So, in this case also the perlite and ferrite are when they are heated with the help of laser it gets transformed these get transformed into the austenite and once these have been austenitized 
through the proper control of the power or the energy density and the you know, laser scanning speed. Uh, we will try uh, this will be austenitized and once it is austenitized and if the section thickness is sufficient as soon as the laser beam is uh, uh, removed uh, from a particular location the heat is extracted immediately by the underlying low temperature base metal. So, basically the base metal here acts as a heat sink heat sink. So, the heat is extracted by the base metal itself quickly uh, from the region where laser has been applied. So, if the laser has been applied over this area, this uh, there will be rise in temperature up to the austenitization or up to the austenitization condition and then this austenitized layer um, will be subjected to the rapid cooling as the heat is extracted by the underlying base metal as soon as the heat the laser beam is uh, removed from a particular location. So, this, rap, uh, the, this uh, rapid extraction of the heat from the heated zone uh, causes the rap cooling rapid enough. So, rapid cooling uh, of the austenite causes the Martens Dick transformation. So, if the section thickness is sufficient, then application of the laser will develop the heat as soon as the austenitization is completed. Removal of the laser from that particular location will cause the rapid cooling due to the uh, absorption of heat rapidly from that particular location and that uh, rapid cooling will cause the austenite to the Martens Dick transformation. So, now, uh, if we see in this case uh, uh, again our austenite to martensitic transformation is being facilitated. Uh, now, we will see uh, one typical um, uh, diagram which is used for uh, determining the energy densities to be used for variety of application whenever the laser is used. So, if we see this diagram uh, here 10 to the power minus 8, 10 to the power minus 6, 10 to the power minus 4, 10 to the power minus 2, 0. This is laser interaction with the base metal time in seconds and uh, this is minus 8. Uh, then uh, the power density on the other side we have 10 to the power 3, 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 7, 10 to the power 9 and 10 to the power 11. That is what per mm square. So, uh, so in one side we have the, uh, the power density of the laser and uh, another side we have the interaction of the laser with the base metal. So, if you want to use the laser just for the heating purpose, then this is the kind of combination which is used. This is the zone for the heating purpose and especially for induction hardening, this is the band which is used, means the lower energy density and longer um, laser interaction with the base metal. And if you want to perform melting, then uh, energy density uh, and the interaction time goes in like this. So, this is the portion where in melting is used and our cladding uses the lower energy densities somewhat higher for welding and then glazing for further higher energy densities. And here uh, we use the cutting range where ablation or the controlled evaporation is achieved. This is the band for evaporation and uh, the laser shock pinning uses further higher energy density. So, laser uh, in the case of laser shock pinning, the laser is applied on to the surface for a while so that expansion heating causes the expansion and then laser is immediately withdrawn. So, that uh, leads to the development of the compressive residual stress onto the surface. So, a this is the zone where uh, the energy density of the laser and that laser interaction which is influenced by the laser scanning speed 
So, higher is the laser scanning speed, uh, lower will be the time for which laser will be interacting with the substrate. So, basically the longer times and lower energy densities are used for the heating purpose because what we want just the laser is applied onto the substrate so that it gets ostentized. So, we want to use the laser for heating purpose only and as soon as the laser is removed rapid cooling uh, by the substrate itself normally causes the sufficient uh, provides a sufficient cooling rate for austenite to mortistic transformation in order to improve the hardness and the wear resistance. But if the section thickness is limited then we may have to use the forced cooling methods which may involve like a air jet or it may be water jet. So, as per the section thickness which is uh, to be subjected to the hardening uh, with the help of laser we will be using either self co uh, cooling or the air jet or the water jet. Now, here I will summarize in this presentation basically I have talked about the three methods uh, uh, related with the transformation hardening primarily. In these methods we have seen that how the different sources of the heat can be utilized for uh, uh, achieving the uh, fully austenitic state in the near surface layers so that uh, subsequent rapid cooling can facilitate austenite to the martensitic transformation. And for the cooling purpose we may use water jet, we may use uh, air jet uh, or we may use the self cooling as per the section thickness. So, basically self cooling is applicable only case of the laser hardening, water jet is invariably used for the rapid cooling purpose in case of the flame hardening and the induction hardening. Thank you for your attention.